you have not fully tapped into your earning potential and there is one thing that's actually keeping you from doing that. And in this video, I wanna give you the five most common money blocks that are keeping you poor. And without knowing you, I would guarantee with almost 100% certainty that one of these five are the things that are keeping you poor. Now, this is in no specific order. Now, hear me out. When I'm saying poor, not meaning that like you're just in poverty and about to be homeless, meaning poor from the perspective that you're not living up to your highest potential and you're not operating at the highest level that you possibly can financially. Now, you might be making seven figures, you know, eight figures. Like, it really does not matter how much money you make. It's all about you truly maximizing your potential to earn as much as you possibly can because everybody's earning potential is different, but everybody has a potential to earn a lot more than what they currently are. So, the one thing that I want to share with you in terms of the, the common money blocks that are keeping you poor is believing that the success path is not universal. So, Years and years ago, I used to hear a lot of people that used to say, you have to be twice as good you know, as, as these people. You know, If you're black, you gotta be twice as good as, as black people. If you're, if you're a, a woman, you have to be twice as good as men. And you hear these things and what it communicates to you is that whoever you are, you're not enough. And that the success path for, for them is not the same success path for you. And that is something that, that they have that you just don't have. And sometimes it all comes down to information. Like that's the only thing that could be the, the deciding factor. But if you live in this world, if you look hard enough, you can find anything out that you want to. And so the money blocks that keep so many people poor is believing that the success path is not universal because the success path is universal for everybody. Because it's not like, you know, you have to be green and, and six foot one and, you know, uh, have toenail inches, a certain amount of, and then you could be, no, it, no, it, it's universal to everybody. The success path is universal to everybody. The problem though, a lot of times that people experience is believing that it's more difficult than what it is. Because success is really, really simple. It's not easy, but it's really, really simple. And sometimes because we've been programmed to think that we have to work hard for money, we just automatically look for the hard way of doing something that, look, it has to be more to it. And it's interesting to further support that, you think about this, we believe more negative than we do positive. Because if a total stranger told us something negative, we would more so believe it than if they told us something positive because of how we're wired and because of how we've been programmed. But, but that money block has really been keeping a lot of people stuck. Now, the second thing is assuming negative intent. And here's what I mean by that. Like there are so many people that get ideas, they wanna do things, but they don't wanna ask for help. But they don't even wanna, you know, let people know what they're even thinking because they assume that somebody's going to have some kind of, you know, uh, negative comment or negative judgment or question, you know, who are you to try to go, you know, or they, they, they don't know anybody who can help them get to where they wanna be in this specific area. And so people assume negative intent and that keeps them poor a lot of times. They, they assume that if they if they ask somebody for help, that somebody's gonna ridicule them you know, or, or judge them, or they assume that if they ask somebody who's super wealthy for help, even through you know, uh, uh, an email or a private message or something like that, that this person is never going to answer them. And here's the thing that I have learned. I have learned that wealthy people are the most generous people in the world when it comes to information. Now, again, a lot of times we see like one or two wealthy people that just do something just ridiculous. They're crazy. Um, you know, they, they might be classes, whatever the case may be. And sometimes we just blanket and say like all wealthy people, like even if we only think it in our mind, like, like this is how wealthy people are. And the reason why we do that is, is we do that to assume the negative intent to keep us safe from taking action. Because if we reach out to them, there's a possibility that they might reject us. There's a possibility that they might just not answer altogether. There's a possibility that, that they might, you know, uh, make us into a viral video of this poor person asking them for help. We assume that that negative intent, but a lot of times we don't even reach out because it's our way of protecting ourselves based on our own assumptions. And, and I'll say this, wealthy people are extremely generous when it comes to sharing information about how they got to where they are and how somebody else can get to their highest level to, for whatever that might mean to them. Like right now, there are like so many YouTube channels that are exploding just from asking millionaires and billionaires how they made their money. And the thing is this, all of these channels would not be successful if these people at these levels were not sharing the information. 
And so the, the, the money block, assuming negative intent, is really keeping a lot of people stuck. And if that was you in, in any way, shape, or form, I highly encourage you to step outside and take a chance, take a risk. You know, because the thing is this, if you reach out and ask somebody for assistance and they say no, or they just don't answer you whatsoever, you didn't lose anything. Like, you, like you're no less further along than you were, but at least you, you, you got the no or, you know, you tried. You know, you got to give yourself credit for trying. Um, and I'll say this, the, the third thing is not having an entrepreneurial mindset. You know, and here's what I mean by that. I'm not saying that every single person has to have a business. However, when it comes to an employee mindset uh, versus an entrepreneur mindset, one thinks about if, if, if problems occur, I'm going to get fired. The other one thinks about if problems occur, I'm going to get paid. <laughs> and, and the thing is this, when, when people have an employee mindset, like they don't really think about creativity and solutions outside of what they've been instructed to do. And so if something goes wrong, they're thinking like either I'm going to get fired, somebody on my team is going to get fired, I'm going to get written up. And so a lot of times they don't even allow their creativity to be activated because the creativity for them could get them fired. And so a lot of value that they could be bringing, even to the workforce, if they work somewhere, they don't even bring that because they're scared of going outside of this, this box that had been set up for them to follow in order for them to follow these specific steps that like their manager or whoever may have set for them. But how, but when it comes to an, like an entrepreneur, like they're constantly thinking about creative ways to solve different problems. Because even when you think about the, the most wealthy people in the world, they solve the biggest problems. And that's what entrepreneurs do. Entrepreneurs solve problems. So when, when entrepreneurs, they see problems, they immediately think about like, this is an opportunity to make a lot of money and help somebody in the process. When people that work for somebody else or they just have employee mindsets when problems occur for them, they think about, man, I could potentially get fired, written up, or laid off from work. So it's a totally different thought process. And like that thought process is a common money block that are keeping a lot of people poor. Now, the one thing that I will say is this, a, a big money block that people have is thinking that I'll educate myself about money later on when I actually have some. <laughs> you know, a lot of people that, that don't have a lot of money, they they don't feel the, the need or importance to educate themselves on money and think that once I get more money, then I'll educate myself on money because what's the purpose of learning about money when I don't have any? And the purpose of learning about money when you don't have any because it, it helps you to maximize a little bit that you have or it helps you to maximize the, the portion that comes in. Because if you can figure out a way how to make more out of what you do have, then you can multiply that to get to where you want to be. But if you just have the mindset that I'll learn about money once I get some, you'll never have any. Because a lot of times people don't realize that it takes you educating yourself, accessing certain information for you to even tap into the creativity for you to even access potentially opportunities to make more money. But, but if you don't educate yourself, then you're going to just stay stuck in a cycle that's going to keep you where you are because if you think about this, if you can't be trusted with $100, you're never going to be able to maximize and leverage and be trusted with $100,000. And even when I'm saying trust, I mean you don't even trust yourself because a lot of times people that don't have money, they don't have money because they don't trust themselves with it. And so as soon as they get money, they spend it because they either feel like I don't A, deserve to have money or B, I don't trust myself with it. So let me get rid of it as quick as I possibly can. And so when you think about educating yourself about money before you have it, that's, that's proving to money and those around you who can, can even give you an opportunity that you can actually handle it once you get it and that you're actually worthy of it because the greatest form of faith is preparation. So if you have faith that you're actually going to get money one day, then the best thing that you could do is prepare for it before you get it because the faith displays that you believe that it's going to happen and the faith displays that you're going to leverage it, maximize it and do what's best when you do obtain it before you get it. And so if you just wait until you get it in order to learn about money, then you're never going to have it. And that's one of the big money blocks that so many people have is that I'll learn about money later because sometimes they fear money. Like they fear even learning about money because it's painful. 
Like they think it's going to reveal something about them that they're not doing. And I get that to a certain extent. But when you think about that pain versus the continuous pain that you currently might already be in, it's like one can last for a, a temporary period of time, but the other is going to last forever, <laughs> you know? And so it's like, hey, I, I would rather the temporary pain versus, you know, the the forever, you know, pain, because that's something that you can actually stop. Now, the last thing that I'll say, and this, again, this is in no specific order, um, is, is not keeping your values in front of you. Like so many people compromise their values for the sake of, of, of money. And, and when, whenever somebody compromise their values for the sake of money, then it starts to eat away at their identity of, of who they even are. And, and now they start to feel like an imposter because it's almost like somebody is prostituting themselves to the highest bidder, even though sex is not even involved. It's like, hey, whatever you're going to pay me, I'll do whatever you want me to do for, for the highest bidder. And the thing is this. When you do that, you're literally selling your soul, you're selling yourself, and, and you're selling the core of, of your being. And it's like, when, when you do that, you never feel whole, you feel empty. Because there's so many people that make a lot of money, they have a lot of different material items, but they feel so empty inside because they're hollow. Because they've sold themselves continuously to the highest bidder, so much so that everything that's inside of them has been seeped out and sucked out from those that have paid them the money and caused them to compromise their values and compromise their integrity. But the reality is this, it's not the fault of the person that paid the money. It's the fault of the person whose, whose values were violated, who did not allow this person to even know that they were violating their values by what they were asking them to do. And so often people do not like speak up for, hey, look, th these are my boundaries. These are things that I will and I won't do. And, and if you don't want somebody like me that's a part of that, then I understand. And people fail to realize that even if you work for somebody else, when you stand up and you speak your values, you immediately become more trustworthy. Because a lot of wealthy people that hire and employ a lot of people, they don't want a lot of people around them that just says yes to everything. Believe it or not, they actually want to be challenged in certain areas. And so when you challenge them in certain areas to say like, listen, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure what your value is, but this is my value. And this is something that I'm not comfortable doing. And, and you know, if, if I'm not the right one for you, then I, I understand that we can just part ways and be friends. When somebody can communicate that on that level to somebody who's at that status, like you, you literally become somebody who people respect and they honor on a totally different level. If you know anything about the, the story in the Bible about Joseph, you know, he went from being a slave, somebody who was thrown in a ditch to, to being like second in command in, in, in like a powerful country because he would not compromise his values. He got promoted because he would not compromise his values. <clears throat> and the thing is this, when you have a standard and you won't compromise your values, that is actually one of the quickest ways to get promoted. But so often people fear standing up to authority, if you will. And there's ways to do everything, but it's like when you compromise your value, you're eating away at you. And, and eventually the people that you're violating your values for, they're not going to even want you around because they feel like I can't trust you. Because if you can't be honest with me about what's important to you, then you're never going to be honest with me of what's important to me. And so these are five common money blocks that keep people poor because they, they, they're A, not aware, but, but B, they, they have the wrong mindset. And I wanna challenge you to truly write these things down and, and be really honest with yourself to figure out, are you compromising in any area of your life or is one of these money blocks keeping you from, from like where you wanna be financially? You know, because when you think about wherever you are right now, and it's not about money, and I, and I wanna reiterate that, it's not about how much money you have. It's about the potential of where you, where you can be because it's all about the gap of where you are and where you wanna be and where you can be. And so if, if you're not where you wanna be, I wanna challenge you to go back and really think about like these five common money blocks and figure out which one might apply to you, but also how do you overcome it? And to, to never compromise your integrity and your values because if you compromise those things, no matter how much money you have, you have nothing.